Hi everyone, welcome back to Stitching It. I just finished this diamond painting and I can't wait to frame it so I can display it in my daughter's room. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to sh show you guys how I have been um, framing my diamond paintings. Now, I, there are lots of different ways that you can display uh, large diamond paintings, but I kind of like the traditional framed look, but you know, custom framing is really expensive. So anytime that the, the dimensions are round numbers, you know, this one, this one is a 26 inches by 22 inches. Um, I try to frame it as, you know, myself. And I've been purchasing most of my frames from Amazon and most of them of those have been coming from a company called Craig Frames and they have uh, they have you know pretty inexpensive framing kits that are easy to put together and work well and I think the result is you know pretty nice for <laughs> Well, anyway, so I picked up this frame on Amazon and I got it for $44.98 that's delivered um, and everything. It's a 22, I ordered this, this 22 inches by 26 inches, so I'm just going to sort of check it <laughs> to make sure it's the correct size frame because I have um, ordered a frame before and it was the wrong frame. It was just was not the right frame I ordered. So, um, and I didn't have time to, to reorder another frame. So I had to improvise in that case. But anyway, um, let me show you what you get, what you get for your $44. And this is an MDF, uh, frame. So it's not solid wood. It comes with an acrylic, uh, front which that is something you know i do think glass looks better but um i do like to have you don't even have to leave the acrylic front in here if you didn't like it um but i like to keep dust and pet hair and anything else that's coming off um you know can get stuck to the painting especially between those round diamonds um i really recommend having a, a front over it so it comes with a cardboard backing and it has all these points already driven in there so you won't even need to drive any points and then this is the framing hardware let's see if i can get it out without tearing the cardboard this is the framing hardware it comes with a wire hanging kit and some D-rings and some screws. And I'm gonna be putting that on um, and getting it ready to hang today to show you guys. So um, the first step to framing your diamond painting, I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time, um, you know, on things that other people have talked about in other videos, but you do wanna inspect your diamond painting. And I think I saw one, yeah. I've lost a diamond somehow right there. <laughs> I had already been over it and over it and over it with the light pad, etc., to um to make sure that that um that I had gotten all the diamonds, but one kind of phenomenon <laughs> with diamond painting and framing diamond paintings as soon as you stop looking for missing diamonds, you're going to find one. And if it, if you don't, <laughs> sometimes it's after you get it in the frame. I've had a couple times where I put it in the frame. I swear I've not, you know, um, done all the diamonds. And next thing you know, there's a diamond missing and I had to fix. Okay, so go over your entire painting as much as you can. Just to make sure that all the diamonds are in place. Then um, you can go over it with this roller thing that they talk about. I don't really think it's that incredibly useful for the rounds, but you know, for the squares, it can be probably necessary to get all those backs flat, you know, adhered. Okay, then I like to go over it because 
there it is residue and other stuff a microfiber cloth or something you know just kind of rub it and trying to get a machine on those diamonds as much as you can if you have any problem areas you can use the um a, a, a clean toothbrush an old toothbrush especially on those sometimes you get more residue on those ABs and you want to be careful because you don't want to rub the coating off on those okay now um, other people have been using now, now I'm also gonna say um, I have just put the, this should fit perfectly in the frame however I've had to squudge them in there before and you don't want to do that you want it to fit perfectly and I have had to trim um, an extra row or column of diamonds off to get it to fit in a frame before so um, because you don't want it to be so tight that the that the painting buckles or um, ripples because it's squeezed in there okay so don't be afraid to remove a row or a strip of diamonds if you need to but hopefully <laughs> hopefully we won't need to do that today <laughs> Um, but I'm just letting you know I have run into the that issue and um, let's see so this one I'm not doing with a mat it's just going to be um, straight in there and I'm going to stick it to the cardboard backing and I'm not going to use any um, adhesive spray or anything like that I'm actually going to be using a double-sided tape Again, that I got off of Amazon from a seller called Sign World, and they advertised this as um, premium double-sided, ultra-thin um, mounting tape f that's acid-free that is uh, used for scrapbooking and um, crafts and things like that. So I've been using that. Number one, when I first started framing my own paintings. <laughs> I would stick them in the frame and not even adhere them to the back and then I have learned that if you do that they will eventually move they will slouch they will you know so you want it to to maintain the best look you want to adhere your painting to the backing and I know that tacky spray is uh, popular but I don't want to mess with that <laughs> I don't want to mess with that so I'm having good results with the acid-free double-sided tape and so that's what I'm going to use today. Okay, now um, other tools that you'll need uh, are a good pair of scissors. This is kitchen shears. Like I said, if it doesn't fit in the frame very well, I cut, you know, I cut off my borders. I don't mind doing that. Now I've been thinking about actually um, putting the key gluing the key on the back of it so that if in case the painting is damaged at some point somehow or needs repair for some reason then there will be a color symbol on the back so I know which colors I need to look for to repair it because I don't save the drills either and I save a B drills mostly square ones but I don't save you know anything like that so for the long term prospect it would be nice I think I'm going to cut off the key and put it on the back okay for just for reference okay so you'll also need um, a butter knife or a spatula or something to 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 move those points some wire cutters for what because uh, we're going to hang the picture wire and you technically I mean I have I don't use these kitchen shears for anything else not in the kitchen they were inexpensive off Amazon so um, you could use you you can get away without the wire cutters but they're nice to have and you need some sort of electric screwdriver or drill or something um, I hope mine will hold a charge because I haven't been able to find the charger since I moved okay so the first thing I want to do is get out my frame and prepare it um, because you do have to peel off the backing. They have clear backing to protect the acrylic front. So first thing, you know, you have to move all these points. You'll push them back. 
Okay. And I may speed something up, but I'm trying to just do it as quickly as I can so I can show you guys in real time um, what it takes to frame a diamond painting using one of these kits. Okay. So we'll just pop the cardboard out. See, it's pretty inexpensive, but you know, you can't see it from the back. So, okay. This is the instructions that it comes with. Disassemble frame, remove film, reassemble frame, and then install the D-rings. Yeah, so this is basically, I mean, I didn't read the instructions, but this is basically what I'm going to be following. So if you got one and you needed that, then there you go. Okay. So first I'm going to peel off this. And at this point, once you get the film off, you want to be really careful that you don't scratch or scuff the acrylic because it's inexpensive. And there's one on, I don't want to try, okay. There's one on the front too. Let's see. Let's take it out. Okay. So now, so I'm carefully holding it by the side so I don't get, and this will split too if you aren't careful with it. I have managed to do that before too. Okay. Let me get these. I may have to readjust the points so I don't mess it up. Okay. All right. So that is ready to accept the diamond painting. And I'm going to put it somewhere over here for a minute. I don't want to put it on the floor. Put it propped up on here. Okay. So the next step that I'm going to do is trim all the way around the diamond painting as closely as possible. It's kind of a thrilling process because it's like, it almost feels like you could destroy it or something. Believe me, I have a video on this channel of me cutting up some, I don't know what was going on with me that day, but cutting up some of my whips that I didn't want anymore. I'm not talking about diamond painting. This was previous to diamond painting. But, so what I'm saying is I guess it could be good for therapeutic reasons, right? So I'm going to save this key. To stick on the back somewhere. Now, I didn't, I also, of course, I didn't seal it because as I understand, sealing a Diamond Art Club voids their, their lifetime warranty. So, you don't want to do that. And it's really not necessary either. I mean, um, though if those diamonds are, are properly adhered to the back, to the canvas, They're not just going to spontaneously fall off. They really aren't. I, <laughs> I, I had a diamond painting that I have a diamond, I don't know, um, that I got professionally framed. I mean, it's a very heavy wood with glass, you know, a com uh, conservation glass. And I gave it to my church and apparently I, this came back to me. <laughs> this came back to me that, um, so the person who hung it up apparently didn't hang it up properly. Um, this one only really requires one anchored hook to hang up because it's not that heavy with the MDF composite frame and the acrylic. But one something that's professionally framed, you know, with big wood and 
you know, real glass. It is substantially heavier. Anyway, it fell off the wall at the church. They hung it on the wall and it didn't get um, properly hung and it fell off the wall. Okay. This is like, this is like a diamond painter's worst nightmare, right? Mm -hmm. And it didn't break. Luckily, it did not break. They said that it did not break. And I was like, oh my gosh, because it has a, two mats and everything. Are those diamonds going to pop off or fall off? No, they're not. It's going to be fine. I'm saying <laughs> these things can fall off the wall and the frame or the glass might break, which it didn't in my story, but I'm just letting you know. Um, they are quite durable. And when I've taken stuff to my framer before, he basically said that the mats or the reason to get conservation glass, not only because it has, you know, less glare and it's just nicer to look at, um, he said that the mats will fade you know in time the mat if you get a mat the mat is going to fade before the resin of the diamonds is going to fade does that make sense so again for the longevity of your product and what you like you can go all the way to that expensive but for for most of my things i'm really happy with the result of framing myself and for less than fifty dollars that is I'm happy with because I don't want it to look completely homemade. I want it to have, you know, I have other stuff that's professionally framed in my house and I need the, the work to look at least somewhat comparable. You know what I mean? So, okay, we are, we have trimmed it. Now at this point, I'm going to try to see how well it fits in the, in the front, the, the frame itself before I stick it to the back. Because again, you may need to. What is that? Some sort of fluff on the outside. I'll have to get that off. Okay, so let me see how snugly it fits in the frame. Because there's a there's it said there's a quarter inch lip around the outside. So okay. So I will not need to trim, to trim it. It's fitting in the frame perfectly. Let me see. There's points, okay, there we go. Let's see if it's in there got some chocolate on the back of my canvas and I'm debating whether or not to try to get it out because I mean to get it off it's chocolate I was doing it with my five-year-old and chocolate happens okay so I just want to see what it looks like from the front I'm not going to show you guys I'm just going to verify that it looks good now I'm going to stick it now I'm going to stick the back on now let me show you let me just make sure it's the correct size. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to put the tape, the next step is to put the tape down and um, it's double-sided. So what I do, and this is gonna be a little bit tricky to see because it's white on white. I go all the way down to the corner, go all the way over in the corner. First I just do around the edges, leaving about half an inch to an inch around the outside. That one's a little crooked and it doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going to lay down all the tape and then I'm going to peel off the, um, the peel off the peel, peel off the peel. 
Okay, so then I either do X's in the middle. It, it doesn't even matter. I like X's. They give a little bit more coverage. Do an X like that. And then you just want to have enough tape down that it sticks flatly. Okay, you know what I just did? I shouldn't have done that. I should have peeled that one off first. I just don't want to lean over the tape. Okay. Let's see how we do here. Can be a little tricky to try to get that top layer of peeling to come off. Okay. Getting close here. All right, so let's see if this will. I gotta take it off. Okay, almost, we got three, three sections to peel off. Now that I'm thinking, I'm not sure where I want to put the key because, again, I don't want it to shine through or not really shine through. But, you know, I did do the unicorn. This thing is supposed to be glow in the dark. OK, that's good. OK, so now the adhesive tape is down and we're ready to put the back on. In fact, I don't even think it's that important. I'm just going to throw the key in here to just stick it in there and keep it with it. All right. There we go. Now. Okay. So it's in there. Now I'm just going to press as firmly as I feel comfortably doing. Check it before I seal up the Ooh. See, that's what it looks like so far. It's falling. Yeah. Good. All right, now I'm going to take the knife again. Close up those points nice and tight. You usually don't just close them in a row, although if I'm in a hurry, I guess I would. But close them in opposite areas so you, you know, do the pressure, I guess. I'm just making this up. Okay. So we're all closed up 
And the framing part is complete. So here we go. And now I'm going to install the hang hardware. So what we will need is some wire. The D rings, and the screws, and all that's left is the anchor and the nail for hanging it up. Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn it over. Again. And on the tutorial sheet that came with it, it's not really a tutorial, the instruction diagram that came with it, um, it said to attach the D-rings about one-third from the top. And really you should measure down to make sure they're even. Not just visual, visual them, but so let me get a tape measure really quick. Okay, put that aside. Let's measure real quick. Seven inches down is what I'm going to do. Okay, where to put the screw? Actually, seven inches. Can mark it. Okay. Mark it on both sides. Next, D-ring and screw. Now this, this takes me a few times, not only because this electric screwdriver is not a, really a drill. And it's these short little screws. So let's see how, how, how many times. Okay, there we go. And the other side. Next step is to take the wire. Now the wire is the trickiest part for me. Okay, my camera is about to shut off actually. So I'm gonna try to get a little close up or shot of me doing tying on the wire for you. Okay, let's start again. All right, I got a little bit closer to show you how I'm gonna do the wire. Now you do, um, this is the last step. As soon as we finish this, first you do me. I do a basic overhand knot and try to get it as snug as you can. Okay, really I'm gonna do and get it in the corner too. I mean the, the, the apex of the deer. I'm gonna do two overhand knots and you don't, it's hard to get, this wire's a little bit thick and Okay, and then after that, you're gonna twist it and wrap it around. 
wrap it around several times. Okay. And if I were earlier, if I didn't have a pair of wire cutters or I didn't want to do something, um, I would just leave it, you know, or twist it loosely around here. But I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> I went to the trouble of making a video, so I'm going to just clip it off. Okay? Now this part, I used to do it too loose. If you don't do the wire tight enough, it's going to... Um, slouch away like lean away from the wall and you do so you want it tighter than you think you do you like you want to try to tie it that tight because it's going to loosen up some so i'm going to try to get it pretty tight because i've had some problems with doing the wires too loose and hold it snug and then you're going to do again two overhand knots two overhand knots. <laughs> okay, see I tied it, uh, see? There's always extra slouch after you tie it, try to tie it tight. So, okay, there's the second one. And they always send enough wire, it's long enough to complete, you know, however long you do it. Okay, now I'm going to wrap it tightly one, two, three, four, five, so at least five times, if not more. Okay, there's one, and this, this one needs to come off too. So we clipped it, and now we're done. I'm ready to hang it up. That is what she looks like. I'm excited. I'm going to show you guys. As soon as I get it hung up on the wall, I'm going to show you what it looks like with in the bedroom with my son and my daughter's um, diamond painting. <laughs> so that's how you frame one of these things. And I hope you guys like it. I hope this was helpful. And um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Okay, so this is what the final um, hanging <laughs> looks like. I've got two diamond paintings hanging in here now, one for my son, one for my daughter. And so, yeah, I'm really happy with how it looks. I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can um, get a little better of the newest one of you. Okay, so, yeah, there she is. So, thanks for watching. Perfect for a little girl's bedroom, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.